So in this section, we will an analyze uh, the friction loss on the water jet. So let's say we have uh, this uh, setting. So means uh, a water from a certain water level flow inside uh, a pipe here and it will create a water jet. So the water jet will rotate the turbine, the Pelton wheel here. So and then it's uh, connected by a shaft. It rotate the generator and then it will produce electricity. So and then uh, in the next slide, I will uh, discuss about the losses for each part in this section. So let's say uh, for section number one here, hydraulic head is the height from the water level to the center point of the water jet. So you know, uh, we learned this uh, in fluid mechanics one, how to calculate Bernoulli equation. So this is the actually height of the water. However, to calculate the input power of Pelton wheel, uh, effective head is required. So effective head is an energy head when the water jet hit the bucket. So effective head means you need to calculate what is the real energy that occur before the water, just before the water jet hit the bucket. So that is the effective head. Because maybe your water high is very high, but the losses is very high, means it could create a slow, not so, uh, not so high velocity of water jet. So effective head is, uh, uh, is an energy head when the water jet hit the bucket. If energy losses need to be accounted, the effective head is not the hydraulic head. So please uh, understand this situation. So and then we go for the situation number two here. Okay, the, the situation at number two here, I'm sorry. Okay, so when water flow uh, inside a water, a pipe like this so means that you need to know how to calculate the major loss so please make revision if uh, for fluid mechanics one how to calculate the major loss so this is the equation for major loss f l over d v square over 2g and bear in mind that you really need to understand which velocity that you want to use okay the v here is actually the velocity inside this pipe not the velocity of this water jet. Okay, you must be careful of the value of velocity. Okay, this is about the major loss inside the pipe. So, and then, now when water flow inside a nozzle, so we also learn in fluid mechanics one, uh, all the bendings, all the nozzle will give us minor loss. So in nozzle here, Okay, and uh, no, normally uh, in this case, we only focus uh, about minor loss in nozzle. So in nozzle here, we must calculate the minor loss. So sometimes uh, in uh, question, they will give you this kind of equation. So mean sometimes they will give you the nozzle coefficient. So when uh, question give you nozzle coefficient, you must use this equation to calculate what is the velocity that occur at the nozzle mean the velocity of water jet just before uh, it goes through the nozzle so let's say this is the nozzle so the, the water just flow out here so actually the the velocity at this point just uh, after the nozzle okay so and then the the value of h here is actually it depend on the hydraulic head okay because this is the calculation of nozzle okay so this is at point number three so and then when water travel from nozzle here to the bucket so again for sure there is uh, an energy loss along the way along so water jets move from nozzle to the bucket there is a loss of energy throughout this movement Velocity of water jet that hit bucket can, can be calculated as V jet is equal to CV uh, times square root 2 GH. So CV here is the coefficient of velocity. So it will be given in the question. And the H here is actually the energy head at nozzle. So this is, you must know, 
when you calculate the velocity at a nozzle here, you must use the head here because the hydraulic head here is the input source, means the, the, the input energy to create velocity at the nozzle. However, to calculate the velocity of jet just before it hit the bucket here, it is actually depend on the head at this nozzle here. So means that if you know the velocity of nozzle, velocity of nozzle, for example, is equal to 5 meter, uh, 15 meter per second. So you, you need to convert this 15 meter per second into V square over 2G to get the head. So and then you use this head, you use this head to calculate the velocity that hit the bucket. So that is the trick in pattern wheel calculation. Okay, because you cannot use this one because it is not directly give energy to this point. So you must know the stage of your water flows. So this is what happened in uh, section number four. So and then in section number five here, so we could calculate the velocity that hit the bucket. So again, so the velocity, uh, for example, if the velocity is 15 meter per second, so we could calculate the effective heat just before it hit the bucket by using this equation, V square over 2G. So it is equal to 11.47 meter. So this is the input uh, energy. So in hydraulic efficiency, so the, the idea is power out divided by power in. So the effective heat here is the energy just before it hit the bucket. So this is the effective. And the Euler heat here is the power, the, the heat that comes out after the water flow through the bucket. Okay, that is the, the idea of uh, energy losses in pattern turbine. So uh, here, I hope you could understand. So if the nozzle has uh, 20 meter per second, so and then at here it's become 18 meter per second. So and then you will could you could uh, uh, calculate it into a certain uh, energy head. So for sure the head here is lower compared to the head of this one. And then the energy inside this one you could calculate depend on this head because the potential head here is uh, calculated depend on the height of water. So I hope you could understand that the energy is become lower and lower because it uh, go through a lot of things. So and then at point number six here, so you know the, the wheel rotate and then it's connected to a shaft. So for sure there is a resistance of shaft, there is a bearing, there is a here and there, the connection and so on. So means that uh, the, the resistance of that will give us the mechanical efficiency. So the idea is still the same. Power out divided by power in. So this is the, the common uh, equation for uh, efficiency. So the, the power out here is actually what we could get at this point. I mean at the output here. And then the power in here is actually from the wheel so and then finally when the generator uh, uh, generate electricity now it can be transferred to national grid line so this is the final output of our pattern wheel turbine Okay, so and then uh, this is the uh, one of the important one and one of the famous question in the final exam. So I hope you could understand the difference between the Pelton wheel and the Francis turbine. At the same time, you could find the similarity uh, between Pelton wheel and Francis turbine. So this is the picture of Pelton wheel. This is the picture of Francis turbine. So, and then if we talk about the turbine type, so Pelton, we, uh, Pelton turbine is an impulse type. So impulse type means the, the, uh, the basic idea of Pelton wheel is about the momentum. It's about the, 
uh, heating water heat the blade so but however the francis turbine is actually the reaction turbine why we call francis turbine is a re reaction turbine because and water will fulfill will fill all the area here so mean all the blade here will uh, attach will uh, contact make contact with water so that is the idea of reaction you know uh, the uh, newton's law we have action and reaction so mean when the water flow so the, the blade will get reaction to move however for pelton wheel here it depends on where water hits the, the bucket so actually water on the heat bucket at certain type at, at certain area at certain time at certain area so we call that's why we call pelton turbine as an impulse type so that is the first one and then uh, for the head here so for pelton wheel usually we will have the higher that your uh, reservoir is the best because we need to have very high velocity uh, at the outlet however for francis turbine it's only ranging intermediate like this one between uh, 40 to 600 meters so and then however so for runner pelton wheel we cannot have very big uh, wheel because the shaft here will create vibration very very hard so when the wheel is too big so it is afraid that uh, the, the shaft here will vibrate uh, too much okay however because uh, francis turbine all the water here will uh, contact with the blade so it is okay for us to have as large as 10.6 meters diameter of runner So and then the direction uh, of flow of water through the blade. So the flow of water is tangential to the runner. It is also called a tangential flow impulse turbine. So by Francis turbine, the flow of water to the blade combine both radial and axial flow. So this is just quite uh, straightforward. You can understand this one. And then the power generation. So the uh, Pelton wheel, it is around 400 megawatts, but uh, for Francis turbine, it could double the output, which is uh, 800 megawatts. So the idea is simple because the blades uh, in Francis turbine always full of water, but the blades uh, in uh, Pelton wheel, it's only uh, being heat uh, at certain time at certain place. So this is the difference. So and then the speed so uh, again as i said the vibration here may be the main problem so it cannot rot uh, rotate uh, extremely in high velocity so maybe at 800 rpm but for francis turbine it may be reach at 1000 rpm and the discharge required here uh, the required discharge for the working of pelton wheel is low however the medium discharge is required for the working of Francis turbine. So what is the meaning of discharge here is the output here, means the, the, the output here. So means the Pelton wheel, because the water jet heat at certain time, at certain place, so means that the output here is easy to handle. So, uh, but uh, means you just let the water go, that's it. But however, because the water here, all the blades uh, is submerged in water so means that the volume of water here is big it's large so means that you need a proper uh, discharge of uh, water so energy type the pattern wheel use kinetic energy and convert into mechanical energy however the francis turbine convert potential engine energy into mechanical energy in in certain uh, textbook you may also say that for francis turbine uh, the it used the element of pressure head because as i said in a pelton wheel everything is work under atmospheric pressure but for francis turbine it work in certain hydraulic pressure so means the pressure at uh, inlet and outlet of francis turbine is different So and then uh, the efficiency is around this one. So pattern wheel because it is open uh, to 
uh, is open to atmospheric, so the, the efficiency is quite less, around 85%, but the fastest turbine, it may reach until 90%. So, and then the pressure is atmospheric pressure. So, this is the water pressure inside the turbine. So, the design, the casing is not important, but in Francis turbine, the casing is important part. If you have leaking here, so means it will reduce your pressure. So, means your Francis turbine may be not work very well. So, and then the flow control. The flow control means how we uh, can do what, what we could do to increase the flow rate and so on and so forth, or how to control the speed. So for Pelton wheel, we could use the nozzle to control the flow rate, but in Francis turbine, we will use guide vane. As I said, guide vane is a fixed uh, blade that uh, to make sure that water will flow, will uh, enter the blade uh, at certain specific angle. And this is the uh, conclusion of our uh, uh, calculation. So this is the uh, equation to calculate the jet. So V is equal to CV square root 2 GH. And the value of CV is around this number. And sometime we could calculate the velocity of U by having phi uh, square root 2 GH. And the value of phi here is 0 0.42 until 0 0.48. And phi here is actually the U divided by V jet. So I hope you remember this one. And the value of M is the uh, ratio between the diameter of wheel and diameter of jet. So uh, this is not our syllabus actually, but uh, it is good for you to know because this is the, the common uh, idea of Pelton wheel. So and then... So uh, this is the value of M. So normally it is uh, 12. So and then the, the value of jet and wheel. So you could have the, the flow rate for total jet. So it is divided by wheel. So we could get the value of one jet. So uh, I will show you here. I will show this calculation in tutorial later on. And then this is how to calculate the, the bucket. As I said, the number of bucket is important because if bucket is too much, so it will disturb the next flow. So means we must make sure that the water hit the bucket and let the, the energy being transferred from water jet to bucket before another, before another bucket comes in. Okay, that is the idea of Carlton wheel.